I don't think there's anything quite as comforting uh, as fresh baked bread. And to me, the king of breads is got to be uh, an authentic old world sourdough bread. So that's what I'm gonna make for you today. So let's get started. It, it really isn't a recipe. Um, sourdough bread is more of a process and ratios than it is anything. Uh, because the recipe really is as simple as three ingredients. Water, uh, I've got filtered water. Salt, I would encourage you to use non-iodized salt. Um, I've got some good pink Himalayan salt here and flour. I've got some good organic bread flour that I got from Lehigh Roller Mills. And, but this is, this is by far the star, star of the show. This is, this is, I don't know if you can see this really carefully, but that is 500 grams of my freshly fed starter. Um, this is actually a, a community, if you will. This is uh, billions of lactobacilli bacteria and billions of yeast and I, I, I love to talk about baking bread with some of my uh, friends because some of my baker friends will say that there's actually four ingredients in sourdough bread. There's water, flour, salt, and thyme. And thyme really is, is, is the, big, the big key here there is about 20 minutes worth of processes over the course of uh, 24 hours or more. Um, last night I fed the sourdough and got it all, all bubbly and healthy and everything. This is 500 grams of, of sourdough starter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure everything. That's what I, I, I meant when I said ratios. We're not gonna go by volume, we're gonna go by weights. Now we've got 500 grams of my starter, which is a 50-50 flour water ratio. So in essence, what we have in here is 250 grams of water, 250 grams of flour. To that, we're going to add, um, we're going to add 275 grams of water. So with the water that's already in the starter, that's gonna equal about 525 grams of water. So we're gonna put 275 grams of water by weight on a scale. 275 is what we're looking for. 266. 275 right on the button. Okay, and we'll just... Uh, we will just stir that together. And so if we've got, with what the water already in the starter was, was 250 grams or half of the, half of the starter, um, and we just added 275 grams of water, what we've got is a total of 525 grams of water. And what we're going to add to that is 500 grams of flour. So if you, if you think that the other half of the starter is 250 grams of flour, the amount of flour that we're going to have total is 750 grams, which provides you a ratio of 70% hydration on, on this dough as the baker's percentage goes. What that means is, is I'm going to have 75% or excuse me 70% of what my total volume in flour is is going to be in water so 750 grams of flour 525 grams total in water so that's that's our ratio so we've got that we've got the starter and the water mixed together 
Now what we're going to do is we are going to add that 500 grams of, of good flour. So again, organic bread flour. I'm going to zero my scale out and I'm going to add 500 grams of flour. There's 250, 360, 490, 475, 485, come on, 490, 495, 499, 500 grams of flour. Okay, now we're going to mix this together. And it's just going to form a very rough dough at this point. And we're going to let it rest on the counter for, a, uh, for 30 minutes in a process called auto-lease. Now auto-lease is a French term that simply means that we're letting the water completely hydrate the flour. So we're going to let that auto lease cover for about 30 minutes. This is now weighted those 30 minutes and you can see that this is still kind of just a shaggy mass of a dough. Um, but we are going to turn this out on the counter and start to go to work on it. So the first thing that we're going to do is I've measured out um, I've measured out 20 grams of salt that I'm going to add to this. And dimple it in and then I'm going to get myself a bench scraper. So that I can start to work that salt in. And you can see that this is a, a rather sticky dough, but it's going to, through a, a series of, of slap and folds that is as simple as, as that, you, you take it and you use the tension that is created by the dough being sticky to, to flip it out on the counter and then you pick it up the opposite direction and do it again. And again, use that tension that is created from the, from the stickiness of the dough to get it turned 90 degrees and flipped out. And this this slap and fold technique is going to start to build those gluten chains and the structure in the dough that's going to be necessary for it to, to trap all of the gas that is being produced, that carbon monoxide that is being produced by the bacteria and the yeast found naturally in the, in the dough. So every couple of passes, use your, use your bench scraper to scrape that off. And we're gonna do this slap and fold for about five minutes. Okay, I have been doing that slapping and folding for about five minutes. And you can see that the dough is, is really kind of come together and, and is uh, starting to be cohesive and, and look like a dough. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to, we're going to do the first of three uh, stretch and folds and separated by 10 minute rests. So I'm going to put some flour out on the, on the board and turn this over onto it. And what we're gonna do is a simple kind of an envelope technique where we stretch it 
and fold it in all four directions. And then you get to that point and you, you want to start to develop that kind of taut surface that you see on a dough that, that rises. And, and what we're, that we're this, this tension pull, we're using the, the non-floured, the, the stickiness of the, of the non-floured side of the dough in a way that we, we pull that in on itself and create on the seam side of this, which is the, which is the underneath, the seam side of this is, is continuously tucked under. And then I'm going to get some flour on the top of that, uh, kind of a, a good amount of flour. And we're gonna put that to rest in a bowl. I'm going to cover this up with a with some plastic wrap and let that sit for 10 minutes. And then we're gonna do two more of those. Set now for about 10 minutes. And we're going to do the second stretch and fold by getting this out. And with the top side down, with those seam sides up, you're going to again stretch and fold this in the method that we did the first time. And again, do that tension pull technique that we did the first time. You're gonna see that the, the dough has become a lot more cooperative and and elastic and pliable. For these second and third, I'm just gonna actually leave it here on the on the counter of this go around. Still covered up with plastic wrap, and I'll see you in about 10 minutes. Here is our third of the three. Uh, stretch and folds. The, 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 the top side is up, seam side is down. We're going to flip that over and again perform that stretch and fold. We're, we're creating those layers that are necessary to, to trap all of the air produced by the natural leavening. And you do that through these stretch and folds, but also this, this tension pull technique that makes the top taut and, and stretched and folds all those seams in under themselves. So we're now going to, to take that, that dough and you can see the size of it now. And we're going to let it do its first of two bulk ferments. This one is going to be about uh, three, maybe even four hours uh, that it's gonna sit in a, a flour bowl. Um, and then we're going to stretch and fold it again and let it rest and bulk ferment for another two hours before we, we bake it. So this is the first of two bulk ferments. We've got this really, really nicely prepared dough. We're going to get some flour and we're going to, to take our dough and and put that in it again with the the top side up seam side down that's now floured and we're going to put it in a bowl and it's going to stay there on the counter at room temperature for uh, three to four hours until it's 
uh, one and a half times the size that it is currently. All right, this has been rising now for about three hours, and you can see that that is one and a half times the size. It smells good. You can smell some of that sour and and uh, yeasty bakery uh, smells. Now, you're going to want to pull this out easily without trying to... You're not going to want to degas it at all. And uh, you're going to have what was the seam side uh, up. So the... the uh, the, the top, what we've been traditionally referring to the top as, as down, and, and we're going to do a beautiful stretch and fold this time and get this dough is really behaving itself very, very well. Now I'm going to start to tuck those edges under. Now, you can see some of these uh, air pockets. We don't, want to, we don't want to deflate this at all, but we need to make sure that we get the seams all down and get this ready for the final proofing, the final bulk ferment before we bake it. And uh, that's going to be a, a about a two hour time frame. So we've made this into a taut, perfect ball again. Well, I'm just going to let this rest for about 10 minutes before we do one final stretch and pull and then put it in a lined proofing basket, uh, a bowl lined with a tea towel uh, for its final rise before baking it. So we'll come back in about 10 minutes. All right, we've waited about 10 minutes. You can see that the dough has relaxed a little bit and, and, and spread out a little bit. This is a, a beautiful, beautiful dough that we're working with here. Again, seam side down, the top is up, We've got a tea towel lined bowl waiting for it. Um, what we're going to do is one final stretch and pull before we put it in its final proofing for two hours before we get it out and bake it. So we're going to release this from the counter and Put the top side down. You can see there's really not many seams on the bottom because of those, those tension pulls that we do. It pulls everything inside and away. But we're going to do one last final stretch and fold. Trying to be kind of as, as, as delicate as we can with it so that it doesn't off-gas at all. It doesn't um, deflate the dough. And this one goes all the way up and over. And then we do that, tuck those seams under. And a tension pull. And you can you can see if you get down here right closely that, that we're creating a really tight surface that, that is going to maintain all of that air that is produced from the, the natural leavening inside and keep it inside. So what we're going to do at this point is, again, this is the top, the bottom has the seam sides. We're going to put this in the basket, uh, top down, seam side up, because we're going to want to turn it out and, um, again, quite liberally 
flowering that and flowering the top of this. I'm going to put that seam side up in a proofing basket, a flower proofing basket. And we don't have many seams, uh, but this is bottom side up in the proofing basket. And we're going to let this do a final proofing and final rise for about two hours. Okay, we're done with our second bulk ferment or second uh, proofing and rise. Um, it's been about two hours. I have preheated my oven with a Dutch oven in there with a lid on it at about 500 degrees. So that's gotten uh, preheated and very, very hot. Um, I'm going to now take this out just very carefully and put it on some parchment paper. So I'm going to just roll this out onto the parchment paper so that I don't, I don't lose any of the air inside of it. And I'm going to brush off some of that flour to keep some of it in, in place. Um, and then we're going to score it. The, the origins of scoring bread were when a small village have had a communal oven and you would score your bread so that you could identify it from everybody else's. And, uh, but also so that your bread had places to grow and swell without it just cracking. So it is functional, but it is artistic also. And, and it's a part that I love. This is my own little, what's called a lom, which is a, a razor blade affixed to, I've got it set it to a chopstick. Uh, it, it just allows you, you can, you, can, you can buy one of these, you can make your own, or you can just use a, a normal little uh, razor blade. But I'm going to simply cut this in both directions really pretty well. I want that to go down and again I'm going to cut it in both directions and then I'm going to make some little wheat on each of these corners I'm going to get the back of a knife because I don't want to cut the surface of, I want to just kind of scratch that to make the wheat stock. So I'm not trying to cut into that like we did here on the top, but I do want to create the stock. Um, and I'm going to cut these a little bit more actually because those will, those will open right up. I'm going to get my um, pan out of the oven so that you can carefully put this in there. Get something to put it on because it's awfully hot. It's 500 degrees, remember. So. And you're going to carefully pick this up and put it in your Dutch oven and then you're going to cover up, <coughs> open up your oven and put it in. And you're going to put it in at that 500 degrees for 20 minutes and then you're going to uncover it and bake it for
You're gonna uncover it, lower the temperature to 450, and bake it for an additional 30 minutes. I'll see you back at the 20 minute part. Okay, it's been 20 minutes at 500 degrees, and this is such a fun part of the process. I wanted you to see this. So, again, 500 degrees, 20 minutes covered, and shabang, <laughs> look at that. Okay, so we're gonna close the oven up and put the timer on. We're going to put it down to 450 degrees and put it for 30 minutes. All right, it's been in the oven for an additional 30 minutes at the 500 or 450 degrees, and it is looking just fantastic. Um, I want to try and get this out of the oven, or out of the Dutch oven without burning myself. So, ouch. There we go. Now we'll let it sit on the counter uh, to cool off for about um, an hour, hour and a half before we cut into it. But this is, I love how it starts to, to caramelize and brown and even flirts with getting, getting uh, burnt and that hollow sound is what you're looking for. That means it's perfectly cooked.